Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 7, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the metaphor of reaping in proportion to what is sown. The session was recorded on the 12th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Well, here it's good morning. Mary and I are again together. Hello, darling. How are Hi, you? Darling. Uh, <laughs> it's been a busy morning, hasn't it? We've yes. had lots of meetings and other things, and now we've come to do a recording for you again. And the record, this recording is another theme discussion on the so topic of the laws relating to, well, really relating to forgiveness and repentance. But, uh, but we're in this, in this phase of the discussion because we're up to session eight, I think it is, this session. Se seven. 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 Session seven, this one is. So um, uh, what we've been doing up to this stage is uh, discussing a number of lead up topics that we need to discuss so that you can understand how the laws of forgiveness and repentance actually work and, and eventually so that we can answer the questions that some of our listeners have asked about both of those things. So what, we go, what we've been doing the last session or so is discussing specific issues regarding the law of compensation. And what we're going to do this session is continue the discussion about the law of compensation. And in this, in this particular session, we're going to look at proportionate reaping uh, proportionate sowing versus reaping. In other words, you reap in proportion to what you sow. So that's uh, the subject of this particular discussion, which Mary and I would like to uh, engage with you. Now, um, I, I feel this and some other parts of the discussion are, are really interesting. And the next one, the next day is also very interesting because it, uh, some of the things on our next discussion, our one that follows this one, hopefully we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it, it has some very interesting points about not reaping, trying to reap what you haven't sown at all. So mm -hmm. so this and the next discussion sort of go hand in hand with each other to, to a large degree. So hopefully you enjoy both of these discussions. And what we're going to do first is have a bit of a review about uh, our discussions up to this point so that you know where you're at, and then we'll get started on the discussion proper. Okay, so let's have a quick review of everything we've talked about in this long series so far. So we've been discussing forgiveness and repentance and all of the different things that contribute to having a full understanding of forgiveness and repentance. So let's rewind back to session one. Dallin, can you tell us what we talked about in session one? Yes, and I think we started this session way back in August somewhere yeah. now, and it's now December. So this is quite, it's been quite a long winded thing, but session one, we, we introduced the concept of the benefits of God's laws generally. And then we, we also talked about the truth, God's truth itself and how we can determine God's truth. And then we examined God's truth about the specific details we want to discuss, which is forgiveness and repentance. So that was session one. That's right. Mm. And then in session two, we continue to talk about sort of the mechanics of, of forgiveness and repentance, what the actual process is. And we really highlighted the truth that it's an emotional process and what that emotional process is like. Yeah, yeah. And then in session three, we looked more at our responsibilities with regard to forgiveness and repentance. It's an interesting concept to have responsibilities about those two things, uh, because most people on the earth today don't believe there is such a thing as a responsibility to forgive or repent. Yeah. And we examined uh, the concept of accidental sin and whether that's really true versus, you know, what what sin really is yeah. and, uh, and in what sin really is regarding our intentions. And therefore, we, we discussed the difference between accidental versus intentional sin. And then we focused more upon uh, the whole idea that it's all about our true, sincere desires here. So developing sincerity, sincerity to go through forgiveness and repentance processes. Mm, yeah. Mm. And then in session four, we started to talk about the law of compensation. And really, we've, we're still in that process, aren't we? But as we'll come to see by the end of our discussions of the law of compensation, compensation is so relevant to forgiveness and repentance. So mm. in session four, 
we introduced this concept. We used, started to use the metaphor of sowing and reaping because it's so fitting and it helps us understand the law of compensation so well. Yep. And, and we talked about also what happens after the death of the physical body and how compensation, how we come to feel and know more about compensation seemingly then than we do necessarily when we're on earth yes. unless we really want to know and then of course we can know but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's usually more forced upon us isn't it in in a lot of ways in yes. the spirit world in the sense of our our cognition exactly yeah. and then in session five we we discuss more about the compensation the effects of compensation itself and the feelings and emotions about sin and desire and in desire and personal truth we we, we looked at all of that as to what the goal of compensation was, the, which is our, in the end, trying to engender and encourage a desire to know the truth about love. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Then in our last session, session six, we began the first of three, um, three ways of discussing this analogy of sowing and reaping mm. in re relation to the law of compensation. So last session, we talked about sowing and reaping in kind. Mm. That is, if I sow a certain thing, I will reap in the, in, with, um, I'll have effects of the same nature. I will have uh, compensation of the same nature of, as to what I have sown. Yes. So then, then now we come to, of course, today's discussion, which is going to, we will introduce it more in detail in, in a minute. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's just going to be a furtherance of the discussion of the law of compensation and the, and the metaphor of sowing and reaping. Yeah. But in this case, we're talking about proportionate mm -hmm. sowing and, 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 and then reaping in proportion to what is sown. Yes. So that's our main focus of our discussion today. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get to the discussion about trying to reap when you haven't sown at all. Yes. And we'll have a look at that and compare these things. To, uh, but, so by the end of the discussion about compensation, which we hope will finish in the next few days, we, uh, we should have a fairly good understanding about mm -hmm. the law of compensation and, and how it impacts upon the processes or the laws of forgiveness and repentance. That's right. And, mm. and as we've already mentioned in these, these discussions of compensation so far, compensation is so relevant to our lives because it's what we're engaging with day by day, minute by minute, uh, whether we realise it or not, Compensation is happening in our life all around us all of the time and it's mm. only when we engage with forgiveness and repentance that we start to um, have some different potentials. But when we're not, this is what's happening to us all of the time. And yeah. so it's, yeah. Yeah, and most of the pain and suffering we experience on the planet is all the result of the law of compensation working perfectly yeah. to bring us to some kind of cognition of the fact that we are out of harmony with love or truth yeah. so that that's the purpose of the law and and the pain and suffering we experience is our determined desire mm -hmm. to avoid the law uh, you know the 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 uh what the law is trying to tell us which is it's trying to tell us that we need to be more loving yes. and more truthful yes and most of the, uh, almost all of our pain and suffering in fact is a, is a result of us determining that we're going to not be loving or not be truthful and here we remember we're always talking about God's definition of love or truth, not not the human definition, which is vastly inferior to, <laughs> yeah. to God's definition of those two qualities. So. Well, and you you coined the phrase. It's almost a lot of times love backwards. So exactly. Yeah. Love spelled L O V E. We call it evil. E V O L. Yeah. And a lot of times it's actually E V I L. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> evil rather yeah. than, rather than anything else. So th this is what the law of compensation is trying to bring us to awareness of what love truly is yeah. and what it means to live in harmony with tr truthfully and yeah. because and the law dictates that if we do that then we reap a lot of love ourselves yes. if we bring ourselves in harmony with it so it, as we always say at the start of these um, um, videos in this long series if you haven't already watched those previous sessions that we've just been talking about we really recommend it because we do refer back to them as we keep going mm. and everything is knowledge being built upon knowledge. So, yeah. <laughs> Introduction to compensation and sowing, then reaping proportionately. So in today's session, uh, we're going to discuss 
very specifically an aspect of um, the law of compensation or the workings of the law of compensation. So mm -hmm. remembering back in session four, we introduced this idea of um, sowing and reaping when it came to compensation, that that's a great way to understand how the law of compensation works. And then we have already spoken in our last session about sowing and then reaping in kind. Mm. So today we're introducing an, another aspect to how we can understand compensation. And that is we're going to talk about sowing and reaping proportionately. And by that we mean that whatever I reap is always proportionate or commensurate is another word we can use for it to what I've sown. Mm. So what we're going to do, um, <laughs> we won't describe all of that uh, explicitly now because that's what we're going to have a whole section of this session about that, mm. just defining what we mean by that. Mm -hmm. Then we'll talk about how that's very predictable and reliable when it comes to compensation. Mm. It's always going to happen yeah. um, in every circumstance. And we'll, we'll discuss some specific questions that help us under, um, kind of think about oh but what about what what about we'll, we'll get yeah. to the but what about because there's a lot of appearances that are deceptive exactly uh, that we need to analyze and say well how what's actually going on here yes yeah. yep and then and then in, in the final part of this session we'll actually talk about some very specific examples and and talk about how when we sow sparingly what we reap in terms of it being sparing and how when we sow abundantly you might say or mm. with a lot um, there's abundant uh, compensation and that, mm. that really illustrates the proportion aspects of it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some things we wanted to remind everyone about, isn't there? Mm. Um, just about compensation and how it's operating. Mm. So would you like to go ahead and introduce us to those things? Yeah, well, the first thing is that we've introduced, yes, last time we discussed this matter, the idea of sowing and then reaping in kind. Yeah. This one, we're introducing the concept of sowing, sowing and reaping proportionately mm -hmm. to what we've sown. Next one, we're going to be looking at things like trying to sow nothing, but trying to reap get something, yep. <laughs> trying to get something <laughs> yeah. even though you've done nothing. Um, in each case, there, there may be a sort of a idea in the listener's mind that, that these are all somehow operating independently mm -hmm. of each other in some way. But the reality is quite different. These all operate, these principles all operate in, co in, in the same... Uh, concurrently. Uh, concurrently, yeah. 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 Um, and, and we can't sort of separate one principle from the other. So, yeah. and, and what normally is happening in a person's life is that they, on one issue, might have sown a certain thing and they're going to reap that in kind. But on, on a different issue, they might be sowing something very, you know, very little and therefore really reaping very little. And... Um, uh, on another issue, they might not be sowing at all. A yeah. And they're doing that all at the same time. Yes. A and we need to understand that these laws are operational all at the same time. The, the, yeah. These, you could say, characteristics or attributes of the law of conversation are in operation all at the same time concurrently. And it's also true, isn't it, that if I um, sow something, then what I will reap will be not only in kind but proportionate at the same time the harvest is always in kind and proportionate isn't yes, it yes it's not oh this harvest is in kind and this one's proportionate no they're together no, all the time everything is all, all of these characteristics or attributes of the law are in operation at all times and therefore all portions that we're discussing even though we've broken them up in the manner yeah. that we have yeah. are all in operation all at the same time yeah. as well so we need to understand that rather than thinking that it's all you know somehow you know god's made these delineations if you like <laughs> of the law or something like that that's not the case at all and there's another aspect isn't it and i think we did talk uh, probably about this fairly at length when we introduced the topic of compensation and what happens when we die but it's very important to mention again, isn't it? Which is that sometimes we're reaping a harvest of what we've sown some time ago. Mm. And sometimes we're reaping a harvest of what what our condition is right now and what we're sowing right now. Mm -hmm. Is that the way? Well, yeah, the law it? of conversation operates upon your current condition. Yeah. But a lot of your current condition has been determined by previous choices and decisions you made. Yeah. And a lot of what you reap has to do with the previous choices and decisions that you've made. And not only your previous choices and decisions, they could be 
the previous choices and decisions of your parents that mm -hmm. and affected you emotionally and you refuse to release those emotions. So naturally that's going to also have an effect. It could also be things like uh, the previous choices and decisions that generations prior to your parents made yeah. that your parents chose to not release and that you are also choosing not to release that affect your condition. And so therefore those things also have an effect on what you reap mm -hmm. as well. So, so you can see that the time delay, it might go, go from anywhere from an instantaneous thing to years and years uh, prior to even your own existence could yeah. be affecting you because of the emotions you're choosing to not release inside of yourself as a result of those events in the past. Yeah. So we need to understand, of course, that we're talking here about uh, like most of what we would classify as the multi-generational sin of our forebears, mm -hmm. which is impacting severely upon our current condition because we've chosen to not release it. So that's mm -hmm. a personal choice. And those things are having a, a quite a severe impact upon us and also therefore have a large d uh, bearing on how the law of compensation operates upon us. Yeah. And we need to understand that too, mm. if we're truly going to understand how the laws and particularly the law of proportion, yes. if you like, is really operational. Because a lot of the proportion is actually based on the previous generations adding to the original problem, problem or the original sin yeah. and then adding to and adding to and adding to and adding to over generations which now is stored inside of me emotionally and that of course then increases the proportion of mm -hmm. my penalty mm -hmm. um, because i'm refusing to release that emotion that's stored inside of me but you are saying that there's a, an accumulation of the emotional injury or the error, say in a negative yes. sense, yes. within me that has been passed down, but it is within me. And so the compensation is attributed to me. Yes, well, it depends on, again, remember in, in the discussion of compensation in session four and five, we did say that if something was done by a forebear yes. and that I had, uh, you know, and I am choosing to not live in the same space, then obviously whatever happens is attributed to the forebear, yes. not to myself. Yep. God is not, uh, you know, doesn't try to correct something that's no longer in you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also God doesn't try to um, correct something that you are doing in ignorance when, when a previous forebear did it on purpose. Yes. So there's, yes. A, there's different levels of compensation yeah. and so forth. And we've got to bear all that in mind too. Yeah. But obviously our desire to not be humble and, and actually release emotion and, and also let go of belief systems that are unloving yeah. uh, has a large impact upon how the law of compensation operates upon me yeah. Yeah, personally. <laughs> I always feel like I'm so glad God's laws figure that out because imagine if I had to figure out the attribution of which compensation goes where and mm. it's kind of a relief to know like if I just, if I just, do my sincere best to be humble and work through what I have and to face a truth that's presented to me through all the operation of the laws and through my relationship with God, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> you know? Well, everything would be okay if we eventually if we respond to the law of compensation, yes. but it would be even better as we will we'll eventually see. discuss yes. when we respond to the laws of forgiveness and repentance yes. instead, which is yes. actually developing within us a desire to go through those emotions. The, yes. Hmm. And we'll see, won't we, teaser, that the compensation is really about, uh, it's really part of its function is to help us to start to desire that desire. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's trying to move us from the point of resistance yeah. to accepting anything as God's truth or love yeah. into a place where we go, oh, I really want to. So I want to work through these issues and get rid of this unloving things these unloving things that exist inside of me, wherever they came from, whether they came from my inability to forgive mm -hmm. past generations or my parents for their behaviour, or comes from my inability to repent for my own poor yeah. behaviour. Behavior. So either one needs to be responded to. And, and this is what the purpose of the law of compensation is to move us from the point of view of just accepting the compensation, which is <laughs> in some ways it's a bit like accepting just being pushed around a bit by a law yeah. <laughs> into a place of actually engaging positively 
another yes. group of laws which can then help us, uh, which are higher laws, mm -hmm. which then can help us avoid the effects of the laws of compensation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, let's get on to dis today's discussion, which yeah. is all about proportionate compensation. Mm. Compensation and what it means to sow and reap proportionately. So in relation to God's principles of compensation, what does it mean to reap proportionate to what I have sown? Yeah, well, this is very simple really, isn't it? It's, it, it, it quite simply is that if I sow abundantly, I will reap abundantly. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I can sow abundantly in an evil way yes. as well as in a loving way. Yeah. So, so if I sow abundantly in an evil way, I'll yeah. reap abundantly more evil. Yeah. And if I sow abundantly in a loving way, then I'll reap abundantly in a mm -hmm. loving results. The same applies if I sow sparingly. So, so if I sow sparingly in a loving way, yep. then I'll reap very little loving results. Yes. If I sow abundantly in a loving way, then I'll, uh, then I'll reap the uh, abundant loving results. Mm -hmm. If I sow it sparingly ev with evil, yep. which obviously would be a good thing, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you would also reap little when it comes to evil. Yeah. So that's the whole principle. It's a very basic principle yes. and uh, something that we just need to consider with regard to the law and how mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, fantastic. And of course, this applies to everything about me, doesn't it? My thoughts, my words, my actions, my desires, they are all in effect sowing something Yes. And they will have a corresponding harvest that you're saying is proportionate to the amount that I've had and the quality, because we talked already in our previous session about in kind. Mm. So the quality of my thoughts and the amount of them will reap a corresponding harvest of the same quality in the same amount yes. or, or can measure it amount, a proportionate amount. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, here we're basically saying that it's so important for us to keep in our mind <laughs> that that we are people who, you know, we, we can't expect to um, to go ahead and reap something that 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 we have not sown. And we yeah. can't go. We can't expect to reap more than we've sown. Mm -hmm. And we can't reap, expect to reap out of kind to what we've sown. Yes. These are all principles that we need to keep in mind when it comes it comes mm -hmm. to sowing yeah. what we sow, we will be will be our result. That will be the result in our life. Yeah. So yeah. can we also apply it um, in the reverse and say, well, this is what my life is like now. Gosh, I must have sown a lot of things in harmony and to the same amount as to what is happening right now in my is, life. Exactly. So yeah. we can re work in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. So what we also need to remember uh, in regard to what you said earlier, and that, that is that, you know, it, it also applies to our intentions our desires and thoughts. See, most people think conversation should only apply to their actions. Mm. They, they think that it should only be my actions that are either penalised or rewarded. And everything I think and everything I feel should all be ignored by everybody around me yes. and be ignored by God's laws. That's yeah. how most people feel and think. God's laws do not ignore our thoughts. Mm. God's laws don't ignore our feelings. Mm. God's laws also don't ignore our actions, mm. but we need to understand that our feelings and our thoughts, which are the causes of our actions, yeah. are also not going to be ignored by the law. It's a package deal, you're saying. It's, we're, we're a package of thoughts, feelings, beliefs, desires, and, and then mm. these all contribute to actions. And basically you're saying that whole thing is assessed yeah. by God's laws and compensation is attributed according to all aspects of self. Yes. And we discussed in earlier sessions how thoughts are frequently stated mm -hmm. and then have an impact on others, yeah. even though the person who states those thoughts remains innocent of the action. Yes. They are, from God's perspective, not innocent mm -hmm. from the action mm -hmm. that others may take as a result of their thoughts. Yeah. And this is where people who stir up agitation, for example, stir up religious fervor and ag agitation and, and animosity and war, but don't actually go to war or, or actually kill anybody. Mm -hmm. From God's perspective, they are responsible for the death sometimes of millions of people yeah. because of their influence. And so we need to bear this in mind with regard to this law too. It's also thoughts and mm -hmm. desires and feelings 
not just our actions that are being proportionately measured yes. by the law and and we will reap in proportion to what we sowed in every one of those aspects yeah 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 sometimes that dirty look <laughs> has a fair amount of compensation attributed to it because it it has thoughts feelings and desires all compacted into a single look at someone that has an effect on that person as well and all of that is attributed to my soul condition that's right yeah. and and not only is it attributed the effects of it yes. are attributed too yes. so remember we've got to bear in mind that sometimes we can just look at somebody very badly mm -hmm. you know in a way that is condescending putting them down or belittling them or so forth and that can have a very negative effect on a person who's in the, who, who's already got a poor sense of their own worth yeah and in some cases it can cause them to even kill themselves like yes. there are people trolls on the internet nowadays yeah. who actually just say nasty things to people and and like it when the person you know has a negative response even yes. to the point where they might hurt themselves yeah. and they enjoy that kind of power over people that yeah. that's the kind of thing that god's laws all all of god's laws deal with that now human laws don't deal with that very no. well uh, but God's laws do deal with that perfectly every time. Yes, mm. very good. Mm. Proportionate compensation is predictable and reliable. So in this next section, I'm going to talk to Jesus about um, the predictability and reliability of um, the commensurate or proportionate aspect of compensation and how that works. But there's two primary areas that I'm quite interested in. The first is the way that compensation is proportionate to efforts, to my efforts. And the second is that it's consistently proportionate compensation in all aspects of my life. So it's reliable and predictable in all aspects of my life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Compensation is always applied proportionate to effort. Will I always reap proportionate or commensurate to how much I sow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you always. <laughs> Good, moving on. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, a, it's a reliable and predictable law, as mm -hmm. we've discussed many times before now. Um, the law of compensation is such a reliable and predictable law that it measures your intensity of the energy you put into something. So if you put very small amount of energy into something, you will get a very small result predictably. Mm -hmm. And if you put a large amount of energy into something, it's highly likely you'll get a much larger result predictably. Mm -hmm. And it's very reliable and, and very predictable with regard to that measuring system mm -hmm. because it, me it measures the energy systems of your soul. So it measures the intensity of your thoughts and it measures the intensity of your feelings. It measures the intensity of your actions besides measuring the results of mm -hmm. such things or mm -hmm. the potential results of such things. And so it's a very reliable and predictable that that if we uh, that whatever we sow, the proportion of what we've, of what is sown will also be reaped. Now, if you think about it from a uh, illustration perspective, mm -hmm. you could say if you were a farmer and you decided you to sow a wheat crop. And so you got a 500 acre wheat crop and you put five seeds in it. Yeah. It's highly likely that you're going to get five or less yes. stalks oh, of yeah. grain, yeah. 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 <laughs> which is not a very big harvest. No. And, and, but if you, if you sow it quite densely, yes. then obviously you will reap in proportion to what you've sown, yeah. given that the other factors are the same. Now, what I see a lot of people attempting to do mm -hmm. is quite different to that. What they try to do is they try to like, be quite minimalist with regard to what they sow. Yes. In other words, get away with the least amount of effort as possible. Yes. Right. And then they hope to reap a large reward from the minimum amount of effort. And in fact, when you think about it, there are certain systems in the planet that are all almost running on this whole principle of, of reaping what I didn't sow mm -hmm. or reaping what I reap, sowing just a little bit and reaping a lot. For example, the investment and financial industry yes. is all based upon that kind of premise, yes. which is I'm going to just put in a few dollars here and I'll get millions of dollars back. Is uh -huh. the, you know, that's the idea. Every, everyone wants there to be some kind of abnormal harvest. Yes. These are the kinds of 
systems that humans design because we are all most mostly injured when it comes to the amount of effort we're willing to put into things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, God's laws measure effort. Yep. So God's laws of measuring the intensity of your thoughts and your feelings and your actions. And that's what God's laws are going to actually reward. Yeah. Not, not this other, not, 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 it's not going to be like the human way of rewarding things. Yeah. Um, but there's a difference also, isn't there, just on that about working smart, isn't there? Of yeah, course. I can work smart and um, reap quite a good harvest, but I still have to work, don't I? Exactly. Yeah. You can't expect to reap a har harvest that's larger than the effort you've put into it yeah. in God's system. In God's system. In human yeah. systems, yes, you yeah. can get away with that to a large degree yeah. because humans have this thing of it's okay to steal from other people to give to you. Mm. And, and a lot of our financial industry basically is based upon that underlying premise that somebody will make a loss and you make a gain. <laughs> uh, God, of course, does not want anyone to make a loss. Yeah. So God's systems are not going to be based on the same kind of investment strategies. Yes. That being said, God's systems are very generous because you can sow one grain of wheat and get a hundred yep. grains of wheat yep. from the stalk. And yep. it's the same when you plant one seed of a fruit tree, you'll get hundreds or even thousands of pieces of fruit yes. from that tree. So it's not like God's systems are not generous. Mm -hmm. They just they just are not generous based upon the suffering of another. Yes. <laughs> In yep. other words, they don't take from one group of people to give to another. Yeah. And that God's laws don't ever do that. Mm. Mm. And I was thinking a little bit about the difference. The, so there's the Industrial Revolution that we saw in history and mm. even the revolution that happened in people's houses in the 50s and 60s when vacuum cleaners were invented <laughs> and, you know, toasters and different things that kind of changed the way a household ran, mm. which meant that less effort was having to be put into the production or the maintenance of things. But... It strikes me that effort went into the creation. Correct. correct. And the, the design yeah. and the engineering yes. and all of these things. So yeah. so that's not reaping what wasn't sown. Somebody sowed all of that effort. Exactly. And, and hu humanity can reap the benefits of what is sown based on the love-based effort of, of, a, of an individual. And we'll talk about that and later. And we'll talk about yeah. that later. Yeah. Here we're talking specifically about this whole concept of being taken from in mm. order to have advantage. Yeah, so in other words, me taking from you in order to for me to have the advantage. You see this a lot in relationships, marriages. You see it a lot in business. You see it a lot in the financial institutions on the planet. And these things are completely, at this stage, out of harmony with God's laws as a result. Yeah. And that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is God's laws are measuring the effort, mm -hmm. your personal effort. And, and unless some other loving person has contributed to your life, through their effort, yes. um, everything that comes into your life will be completely in proportion to the effort that you've invested. Yes. Yep. So I'm always going to reap very little if I've sown very little. I'm always going to reap quite well and a lot abundantly if I've sown quite a lot and abundantly in whatever kind of sowing I did, mm -hmm. be it uh, loving or unloving. Yep. Now, I had a note here in the uh, outline to ask you specifically about, and I don't want to talk too much about forgiveness and repentance because we will later, um, but it, there is kind of an exception to this rule, isn't there? Or is it an exception if I engage the laws of forgiveness and repentance? Well, I wouldn't call it an exception. It's no. more of the hierarchy of, of God's laws. Yes. Remember when our assistance groups last year in 2016, we discussed that God's laws have hierarchy. In other words, some laws are lower than other laws. And if you engage the higher law, it's like the lower one does not exist. An mm. example of that was, which was given in the physical, which is the law of gravity versus the law of aerodynamics. If you mm -hmm. engage the higher law of aerodynamics, to a certain extent, it's like the law of gravity does not exist. It's still there. Yeah. It's still in operation. I'm just no longer bound by it because mm. I'm engaging a higher law. Mm. The same principle applies with the laws of forgiveness and repentance with the law of compensation. The law of compensation is the lower law mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, correction of the soul. Mm -hmm. The laws of forgiveness and repentance are the higher laws mm -hmm. in, in regards to the correction of the soul. If I engage the higher laws, it's almost like the lower law doesn't really exist for me anymore. Yeah. 
but it's still there and it still exists and it still mm-hmm. operates. It just doesn't operate upon me because I'm engaging the higher law. Mm-hmm. While I'm engaging the higher law, the lower law, it's like it's not there. Yes. But as soon as I don't engage the higher law, the lower law is still there and it's still in operation and that's what will affect me. Mm. Mm. And I was thinking, and perhaps I could just read my statement and you can mm-hmm. correct me if it's wrong, because I was thinking more in relationship to my relationship with God and what I receive from God can measure it to what I give to God. In yes. that. So my statement was this. In the case of repentance, while the reception of forgiveness from God is not commensurate or proportionate to our efforts, God does not gift us forgiveness or the experience of forgiveness, I should say, if we have not yet surrendered to our full desire and longing to forgive or repent. Yes, I suppose it would be more correct to say that forgiveness and repentance are desire-based laws. Yes. In other words, if you haven't got a full desire, they can't be engaged anyway. Yes. So you're automatically... Yeah. Impo- the law of compensation is imposed upon you. Mm-hmm. The higher laws can only be engaged through desire. And I'm talking here passionate desire yeah. and, and with the thought and the feeling and the action all yeah. in harmony yeah. to a high level of passion. Yes. And that's how the law gets engaged. The higher laws all get engaged through that same method- methodology. Yeah. If we've just got a subdued passion then God's laws won't operate at all in the higher sense Mm -hmm. because a subdued passion is not a passion from God's law's perspective. And therefore, we're now being, the lower law is being enforced upon us now in terms of, that's what we're going to be governed by. So so it's more correct to say, unless the desire exists Mm -hmm. to engage the higher law, the lower law will remain in force in my life. Yeah, and I guess what I was trying to clarify with you, so in my final part of the statement was, so in this way we must sow abundantly our desire to forgive or repent, and then we reap abundantly through the reception of forgiveness or repentance, but it's not commensurate. It's, the bit that was getting me was it doesn't seem proportionate. What I receive from God when I feel God's forgiveness, when I fully engage repentance, it feels like what I receive is far more than what I've given. Yeah, but now there's exchange. a confusion between the law of compensation and the law of forgiveness and repentance. Yes. The law of forgiveness and repentance has huge amounts of gifts associated with yes. it, okay. which the law of compensation does not, does not have. Yeah. The law of compensation does have gifts associated with it. Yeah. One of the gifts is a correction of your bad behaviour. Yeah. Another gift is the reward for you abu- uh, enduring other people's bad behaviour. <laughs> yes. that these are all gifts from the law of compensation. I see. Yeah. And they're not the result of the law of compensation, they're the gifts associated with the law of compensation. The gifts associated with the law of forgiveness and repentance are completely different. Mm. And therefore, we can't confuse the two. And and each law has gifts associated with it yeah. for its engagement, if yeah. it's engaged in a loving manner. So is the true statement then the gifts relating to compensation are always proportionate, whereas the gifts relating to higher laws are are not necessarily always proportionate. Well, no, I feel the gifts relating to conversation, uh, gifts are never proportionate. proportionate of course. And so, so we've got to understand yeah. that with regard to every law, the gifts associated with the law mm-hmm. are never proportionate to the actual effort engaged. That's because God is a very generous being <laughs> and he wishes to give gifts far that far exceed our own effort. Yes. Right. So then are you saying that um, positive compensation is not a gift then because it's, it's, it is always proportionate? When you say positive compensation, I would even argue with that term. Good. Because okay. I, would, I would go, all compensation is it's positive. positive. I know, I know. <laughs> because Happiness-based one, compensation. Well, all of it should bring <laughs> it should happiness. happiness. <laughs> uh, you, here we're talking about compensation that's corrective. Yes, which is all compensation. Things. And then there's compensation that is rewarding that brings certain things. Yes. Right? Now, in my sense, they are all positive. Uh, I agree. Whether it's yes. corrective or rewarding, mm-hmm. it is positive compensation. Mm-hmm. Like every one of God's law is positive. There's no such thing as a negative result of any of God's laws because yeah. all of God's laws are loving. Yeah. We just see it as negative. So then so. when you say when you say there's gifts associated with compensation, you're talking not about the corrective side. What are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about all sides. 
there is a there are gifts associated with being corrected. It's yes. a great thing to be corrected. Yeah. You, you end up with a better life, happier life and everything else. It's good to be corrected. Right? Yeah, yeah. Most people on earth don't believe that nowadays because yeah. most people on earth have been corrected violently by their parents mm -hmm. or at least emotionally violently by their parents. So they don't believe correction is a good thing anymore. Yeah. But from God's perspective, correction is always a good thing. If you're, if you're on the wrong track and you put on the right track, isn't that better? Of yes. course it's better. <laughs> right? So so compensation, like the gifts associated with compensation, engaging the law of compensation are great. Mm -hmm. They're just not, they're not as high as the gifts associated with the laws of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. Right? And we need to start understanding that compensation is a good thing. Because mm. if, if compensation wasn't in operation, we would have a much, much worse society mm -hmm. than we currently have. Mm -hmm. And uh, and fortunately, God designed compensation to prevent society from being completely anarchist. Yeah. Um, you know, and compensation is one of the reasons why society isn't like that. Yeah. And and so you know, these are it's a very positive law, never a negative thing. And and I, there's no such thing as negative compensation. There is corrective compensation. Yes. Yes. And there is rewarding compensation, and both of them are good. Yes. One corrects our wayward action mm -hmm. and the other rewards our action that's in the <laughs> harmony with love on the straight and narrow isn't, on yeah, the straight yeah, and narrow yeah, as you yeah. might say yeah so isn't that wonderful like yeah. uh, they, they both have really good results and we Definitely. need to bear that yeah. in mind so when it comes to our relationship with god as well when now anytime you engage a relationship with god you're engaging higher laws than the law of compensation so there are gifts associated with those higher laws that compensation doesn't give mm -hmm. because compensation is a lower law. It's mm -hmm. just like there's gifts associated with knowing aerodynamics associated compared to just knowing about the law of gravity. Yeah. And one of the goes gifts is you can fly. Isn't that wonderful? Totally. If you've got a machine to do it with the right with the right design, you can fly. You can travel at large fees and fly. Whereas on the earth, you know, on the ground, it's much more difficult to do that. So. So every one of the higher laws has specific gifts associated with it. And we don't need, we don't, we've got to be careful that we don't see that as compensation. They are gifts given by God through engaging that law. So then if we loop back to the proportionate aspect of compensation. Specifically as a law. Specifically. Yep. As an aspect of the law really, isn't it? It's a quality of the law rather than the total of the law. Yep. Um, we see that there's corrective compensation. We see that there's sort of rewarding compensation. Some is associated with pain, some with pleasure. All of it's loving. All of it's loving. And um, there's even corrective compensation that corrects others when they've done things to us. And there's corrective compensation that rewards us when others have done unloving things to us and yes. we've endured it without being unloving. There's, there's all sorts of types of compensation <laughs> that come from these particular events. But you're saying that whole thing yep. is proportionate to the efforts involved in everyone involved. Yes. How it's attributed, it's, it's always proportionate. Compensation, always proportionate. Yes. The gifts of compensation are not always proportionate. Yes, and that's where <laughs> I could go down a rabbit hole with you. However, I will not. Right. And maybe if I can give an illustration of that. Let's say, let's say... I have engaged some unloving behaviour with you. Let's say I've had weeks and weeks and weeks where you've just cooked for me and cleaned up after me and I've just sat around watching telly and, and been lazy, right? <laughs> and at the end of the day, you say, you're not doing that anymore and you left. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> right? There's a part of my conversation, which is... Me leaving. You leaving. <laughs> right? I've now go, well, I might have done something wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is even your anger with me for sitting around doing nothing it's is a part of my compensation because I, I have triggered that anger by my action. Mm -hmm. I have taken actions which naturally is, is using or abusing someone else. Mm -hmm. So that, that's even a part of my conversation. Too. But my anger is my responsibility in that case. It's not. It's of a course. choice I'm making, isn't it? It's of not course. necessarily a part because that's under the but dictate I, of my will. But if will, I do get it from you... It's, a, it's sort of a natural it's consequence. It's a part of what I created. Yes. It's a natural consequence of what I did. Yeah. So it is a part of the conversation working on, okay, my, on yep. me to correct my actions, right? Yes. Let's say, because I notice all that, I go, boy, I've done a terrible thing here and I need to stop this behaviour, I need to correct it. And now when I engage with Mary, I'm mm. going to be 
you know, much more equal and everything. Yeah. Now, absolutely. Mary notices that. And what does she do? She still loves me, so she comes back into my life, yes. right? That, that, that might be what you do, yeah. right? So, so there's my reward, if you like, from, from actually engaging the law of compensation. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful reward. The reward is higher, is a, is a much greater gift if you like, then what I did is worth. You being open towards me again emotionally is a gift you're giving me mm-hmm. based upon... It's my choice. It's your choice. It's not necessarily... But it's based under- upon the fact that I've made some changes. Yes. Right? That I chose to make on mm-hmm. my own part. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, while those changes might have been minor, yeah. the gift far exceeds the change yes. in that I get back this beautiful woman I want to be with, right? Yeah. So that, that, that the gift that far exceeds the change I made. The law of compensation causes all the negative events and all, all the illness and everything else within me that I, go, I create through the action. But when I change, the gifts associated with my correction can far exceed my change. So you could say the change has been for enforced by the law, mm-hmm. but the gifts are what people choose to do after I've changed. Yeah. So they are almost independent of each other. Even if I receive no gifts, I will at least receive the benefit of having changed. Through the operation of the and law. therefore the clearing of my own system, you'll feel and better about I'll yourself. feel better about myself, and I'll also yeah. be less uh, have less illness and so yeah. forth, yeah. less suffering, less pain myself. Yes. But I may not receive your gift. That's right. Depending upon what you choose to do. Yes. Right. That's up to you. Yeah. The law has enforced a certain set of behaviours upon me to correct me. Mm-hmm. But the gift you give is independent. Yes. Of me engaging the law. Yeah. Gotcha. So we need to understand that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Compensation is proportionate to effort in every aspect of my life. So do I reap commensurate to my efforts and desires in all aspects of existence? Yes. So remember, the law is all about measuring energy systems of the soul. And so whatever can flow through the soul or be thought of by the soul, they are all energy systems in play. And, and the law measures energy. It measures the flow of energy, how the energy is flowing. So a thought is an energy system. A feeling is an energy system. A belief is an energy system. An emotion, energy system. An action took energy to take all systems that the law measures. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, every aspect of your life is going to be affected by the law. And it has to be in proportion to the amount of energy that's flowing. Yep. And so if you're if you're really got a strong intention to do really evil things, you're going to create lots of evil. That's the law in operation. You are going to create lots of evil and you're going to receive the hardship that comes and the pain and suffering that comes at some point in the future from creating so much evil and having such a passionate desire to do Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a very small desire to do good things, (laughs) <laughs> right, you know, as most people, most people nowadays have have a thoughts of good, yes, <laughs> but very rarely carry them out. Yeah, right, for lots of reasons: some selfish, some some not, some fear based, some anger based, and so forth. Under those circumstances, very small amount of energy in play. Yeah, in the, the positive direction. In any direction, positive or negative, but in this case, we're saying positive. Small amount of energy in play small amount of results yes. from the law. But the energy involved in the anger and fear and the things preventing that positive thing, that will have its compensation. That's, that's al- energy as well. Well that's isn't already it? having its compensation. Yes. It's already energy that's in flow. Yeah. That that's that we've that that it is going to have its results already. Yeah. But that's interesting, isn't it? Because really you're saying um, you know, I've already got a condition that has fear and anger within it. I have a thought to do something good. But if I let the fear and anger dictate the progression of that thought and limit it into a feeling and then an action or a feeling probably came first, but the feeling thought cycle, if I let the fear and anger uh, limit that process, then I limit the, I 
limit the positive compensation that's possible. The, when you say you let the fear and anger limit, I the fear and anger, no, 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 the fear and anger will limit. Yes. But that's what fear and anger does. It yes. limits. And um, it is a choice to release the fear and anger yes. so it no longer limits. Yes. Right. So that's a good thing if you could do that. Yeah. But, but understand that you can't sort of overcome emotion no. inside the soul. The emotion is there. It either needs to be released or experienced yeah. to be released or you're going to leave it there. And if you leave it there, it will have already in operation all the compensatory downsides. Yeah. The corrections. Yes that are occurring to try to get you to release it. Yes. So so we can't sort of overcome it. No, but I could I could follow a desire and allow that process to uh, yes. trigger my emotions. So let's give an example. I, yeah. I, I have a desire to build a new business. Yeah. But I'm very afraid yes. that I won't have enough money and I'll, and mess up and, 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 I'll, and, and I'll probably lose like my house idiot. maybe yep. if everything goes wrong and yep. you know I have all these other fears. Now, those fears automatically, uh, they're in me, yeah. they're automatically playing out on my mm -hmm. life. I'm already being compensated for them. Yes. They're already existing. And if I leave them in me and if I act in harmony with them continually forever and ever, they will compound and it will be more and more. Of course. Sort of. The beauty of having the desire is you might trigger some of these fears yes. and feel some of them and release them. And that yes. would be a good thing for you, right? Yes. Um, but but that's, again, a choice to release them. Yes. But you can't choose to overcome them. No. You can only choose to release them yes. so that they are overcome. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, yeah, we need yeah, to yeah, yeah, make yeah. sure that we don't imply here that, you know, some... You, you know, can through, divide yourself or something. Through an effort yeah. of will, yes. power... Yeah we can somehow overcome what's within us. Yeah. No, we, we need to use our will and our desire to overcome yeah. what's within us by actually working our way through what's in us. Yeah. And that, that the law is actually encouraging us even to do that, yeah. the law of compensation. Yeah. So the law of compensation has a lot of benefits, but it is in every single aspect of my life that everything will be proportionate. Yeah. And, and that really gets down, and that what I notice in, in regard to emotion in particular, is that most people do not so very much when it comes to releasing bad emotion. Yeah, painful. Or, painful yeah. or unloving emotion. Yeah. That, uh, you know, unloving beliefs and so forth are all painful emotions that we're not releasing. Most people put very little effort into releasing or experiencing unloving emotion. And that's why it has such a large impact upon all every other thing they do. Yeah. Because it's a very core part of how the human soul is doing, being designed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so so we need to understand that this emotional aspect of things is very very important and it always was going to be important in our discussion if you think about it because you know we're talking about forgiveness and repentance and mm. they are all emotional processes mm -hmm. and this law compensation is encouraging you towards forgiveness and repentance so naturally it's going to be encouraging you towards <laughs> yeah. emotional processes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rather than trying to overcome things through a force of will mm. yeah mm. yeah very good mm -hmm.